Absolutely. If we move on to the actual recruitment process, mm -hmm. let's talk about job design and the advert itself and how from the front end, uh, this can start the whole bias uh, in, pro in process. Yeah, jo job analysis is an essential part of, of any recruitment. So it's, it's the point where you start to think about the job you're recruiting for and describing it for the person that wants to apply. Now, the way that we mostly start this is we potentially talk to the person that's doing the job at the moment. We maybe talk to their boss, their colleagues, and potentially, if we've got access, we might talk to some customers or people that interact with the process. Now, that's a great way of understanding the skills and the competences that are required to do that job. However, it can come up with some difficulties because what it can lead us to do is think about what that person particularly brings to that role. Mm -hmm. Now that could be that they bring a, a, a characteristic that is necessary for that role, mm -hmm. but it could also be that actually it's just a characteristic that they have and it doesn't play into that role at all. And so in doing that, we unfortunately kind of recreate the person that's had the job in the past. Now, echoing back to what I've said previously, when we've got a workplace that has been built for specific people, we are then just reinforcing that and, and, and restricting other people from getting into that role. So I'll talk a little bit about what we can actually do about that. So sometimes it can be quite difficult to, to kind of differentiate between the traits that are necessary for the role and those that are just held by the majority of people that have that role. Mm -hmm. So normally what you can do to make this a lot bit easier is employ a person who is completely divorced from the role and is professionally trained to do this job analysis but I, I kind of recognise that a lot of organisations don't have the budget to do that to employ a business psychologist. So there are a few things that you can consider, questions you can ask yourself about the role to enable you to do it yourself. So the first one probably I would say is um, consider whether the characteristics of the person in the role are actually essential. Um, so the, the, the example I give, which is an easy one to, to kind of to, to think about for people that aren't necessarily in all different kinds of roles is if you were employing somebody to work at a brewery, you might put on the job application, they've got to love beer. That seems to make sense. You know, why would you want to work for a brewery unless you love beer? Mm -hmm. But what that does is it conjures up an image in a person's head of the kind of person that you might be looking for if you want somebody that loves beer. Yep. If I was thinking, what kind of person loves a, you know, a, a, a micro-brewed ale, you know, they might be male, they might have a beard, they might have a little ponytail, you know, they might be a bit hipsterish. Mm -hmm. It probably doesn't conjure the image of a 50-year-old woman. So in doing that, you might be putting people off picturing themselves in that role. And that can have a big impact on whether a person actually wants to apply for your role or not. Something else you could consider mm -hmm. um, is, does the role have to be performed in standard hours? So as I've mentioned before, uh, people with a disability or people who have got caring responsibilities might not be able to work in core working hours. They might find it difficult to travel during rush hour. Um, some roles absolutely have to be performed if you've got a customer walking in during what you know if you're in a shop and you've got a customer walking in well yeah you need them to be there during core hours but if that's not necessary you might be able to open it up to a wider range of people mm -hmm. that can work flexible hours yep and the final thing i would say is does the role have to be full-time i find uh, a lot of organizations when they're looking for a new role default to full-time unless it's a very good reason not to and they kind of fill that role with 35, 40 hours worth of work, instead of thinking about whether actually it could be 20 hours a week or whether it could be 25, or if, could it be a job share? A job share, you get the best of both worlds, get two heads for the price of one. So having asking yourself those questions of, do I need to maintain the status quo in this role or are there other things that I can, I can utilize? Okay, that's perfect. And I, and I really like how you broke that down because I think it simplifies uh, how easy it is to end up with a with bias within the process mm -hmm. right from the start and as a recruiter yeah. I can tell you that the number of times I read a job description and I'm just shaking my head thinking crikey this is going to attract all the wrong people uh mm -hmm. you know I, I, I'd be a millionaire by now literally yeah job descriptors are a really a really good place because in a job advert I mean, I'm not going to bore you with lots and lots of research, but there is some research into what attracts women to particular roles. I specialise particularly in women in leadership, um, and some of the wording that we still see prevalent in these roles tends to be quite masculine, mm -hmm. and that can put women off being able to, again, picture themselves in that role. 
And just that slight change of wording. So instead of using a phrase like um, challenging your team, it could be um, encourage your team or inspire your team. And that's more likely to attract the full range of people that could be uh, could be able to do that job really well. Absolutely, absolutely. OK, 